G'day everyone, Virtual Conquer 85 here and welcome to this update video for Continuum 1.3 Preview 2. Now, I'm going to try and keep this video as short as possible and basically just go over some of the new things and uh, basically give you some inside information onto some of the uh, shader options. Now, first of all, uh, we have indeed, uh, well I've gone in and uh, added support now for the GTX 500 series. It is not guaranteed that it will work with every GTX 500 card unfortunately. Um, but I'm hoping that it will be. It does work with my GTX 570 on my old computer. Uh, now, this is some important information for the GTX 500 series owners. Uh, when you first launch this shader, it will be kind of like a muddy brown sort of coloring and to fix this you will have to go into your shader options and you'll need to go into surface options options weather dynamic weather and you need to turn dynamic weather off uh, I still haven't managed to get some, uh, the support for the 500 series working yet with that one and I don't think that I will uh, it's not that an important effect really. Once you've done that you'll probably find that the screen will go a blue sort of color. What you'll then need to do is to go into your sky options and in clouds and turn on the GTX 500 cloud fix. Now this is purely for GTX 500 series cards. If you turn that on without a GTX 500 card you'll end up with this awful looking sky. Alright, so yeah, that is purely for GTX 500 cards. Alright, another change that has been made is to the water. And as you can see here, this is Preview 1. And in the new Preview 2, I've uh, brightened up the color a little bit, so it's nowhere near as dark. So when you guys load up uh, Preview 2, this is what you'll see. It's a slightly better look to it, I reckon. Nowhere near as dark. Uh, the underwater it's still pretty much the same so yeah that's uh, a little extra change that's been made for the better I hope right the other thing that I wanted to show off is the new specular now this here is uh, preview one using Poultra uh, texture pack and as you can see everything is like super bright super shiny and it just looks awful the old specular doesn't doesn't actually play very well with PBR textures so I've gone in and made a few changes and we have a new specular now for the Preview 2. And here it is. So when you load up Preview 2, this is what you should see. Granted it's not exactly you know, proper PBR that you know, was in Continuum or that's uh, going to be in the new Ebin shader. But at least it makes um, you know, textures that have PBR support, more playable now. And it's not half bad, it's doing the job I guess. Now, if for any reason that you don't like this new specular, if it doesn't play well with uh, previous te or other texture packs that you got, you can come into specular in the shade options and just turn this off, specular PBR. All right. And now we'll revert it back to the old specular. And just another quick example, this here is Ovo Rustic. Uh, this is Preview 1 at the moment, and if I switch over to Preview 2, you'll see the difference. And this is Preview 2. As you can see, the gold and the iron have a little bit more shine to it. So hopefully everyone likes this new specular. Alright, the next thing that I want to go over is Global Illumination. Now there are several things in here that you can play with when it comes to global illumination but the two that you mainly want to just uh, play with is the GI quality and the GI radius. Now depending on what number you've got set here will depend on what one you should have set here. Now for 1.0, 0.75 radius is a good you know, number to have. Any higher, say roughly about 2.0, you want to increase the GI radius to 1. Same as if you have the GI quality at 0.5, you want the GI radius at 0.5 as well. Now, 
just as an example, if you don't do this, if you say have the GI radius at 0.5 and you have this at say quality 3, this is what sort of uh, the effect that you'll get. Alright, now this is my little uh, GI test area and as you can see, up in the corner here, the GI isn't actually reaching it because the radius is too short. Alright, so what you need to do is come in here and change the GI radius to 1.0. Any higher than that and the GI starts getting a bit funny. Uh, so really you don't want to go too much higher than you know 3.0 for the GI quality. But if you do that, as you can see, it fixes the GI and you got nice, you know, good illumination bounce in this little test area. Now the same goes for if you have the GI quality down low, but the radius up high, this is the sort of effect that you'll get. Alright, so this is with GI quality at 0.5 and the radius at 1.0. Now as you can see, you're getting a lot of uh, light bleeding up into the ceiling and the bounce is not very good. Basically, it's bouncing a lot of the grass light from outside into this test area. So if you're seeing something like that, then obviously the radius is wrong. Now if we change the GI radius back to 0.5 and go OK. And as you can see, this is how it should look. Granted that, you know, it doesn't look as nice as having it on the higher qualities, but this will give you a much greater performance. And realistically, I'd probably recommend this for most day-to-day -day gameplay. Unless you're doing uh, video recording, this, this is probably the setting that you'd want to have it on. Alright, and lastly, the only thing I want to talk about, um, besides the uh, shader options, which we'll get to in a minute, is the volumetric light. Now, I have added in a new volumetric light that you can t uh, toggle on and off. Alright, so in the volumetric light settings, you'll now see a Zeus volumetric light. Now what this is, is the way Sonic Ether has done it in Zeus V11. And in a lot of ways it is probably better than the way that I've set it up or you know, Continuum has it set up. Uh, to basically you know, explain how this one works is that volumetric light with the way he's done it gets stronger the closer you look to the sun. So if you're looking the complete opposite way to the sun the volumetric light strength uh, is reduced quite a lot. Basically that reduces the overall haze of everything. And it also goes by the brightness of the sun. Meaning when you go inside buildings uh, with the dynamic uh, light change, the volumetric light will get stronger because the outside light is also increasing. There are, however, downsides to this new volumetric light. Now, what you're seeing here is Continuum's version of volumetric light. And since we're not looking at the sun, it, you know, the way we've got it set up is with more controllers. So in this situation, volumetric light looks really quite nice as it's coming through by the top of the roof here. And if we switch over to the Sonic Ethers method of doing it, now believe it or not, this is actually got volumetric light on, but because we are actually looking away from the sun, it's nowhere near as visible. Like the strength of it is you know reduced a fair bit. So basically depending on what you want out of it is to which one you'll use. Now if you really don't like using 2D god rays. I would recommend using Sonic Ether's version of volumetric light simply for this one reason. Now, as I mentioned before, Sonic Ether's way of doing it is that the volumetric light gets stronger the closer you look to the sun. So in this sort of situation here, you can see the rays of light coming through really quite nice. Now I've turned the 2D God rays off, so this is all volumetric light that you're seeing here. Whereas with the way that Continuum has it is it's really quite hard to actually see the effect because it, it's just an all over you know, 
one type of uh, strength for the volumetric light. So you can still see it a little bit, but it is quite hard to see at times. Which is basically why I've left the 2D God Rays in, to basically help out in these sorts of situations. So with the 2D God Rays back on, you can see now that it does have a greater look to it. You can sort of see the beams of light sort of coming through the, the gaps in the tree leaves as well. All right, just through here. But if you really don't like 2D God Rays, and there's a lot of reasons to not like them, they're very inaccurate and they can look quite ugly in some situations. Uh, but yeah, if you are one of those people, then perhaps Sonic Ethers, Volumetric Light, would be the way to go. Alright, and lastly, I want to go over the shader options because once again I've gone through and reorganized it all. Uh, basically, I've gone through and used the language file to clean up some of the names for these, so there's no longer that line underneath, you know, because you can't use spaces without the language file. Alright, so you've got your, now your shadows and lighting options. In here, you have your shadows, your global illumination, volumetric light, 2D god rays, just overall lighting settings, which is your light jitter, overall brightness, and such. Temporary underground light fix. Uh, there's a surface options in here. You've got your POM and specular. Uh, your water. Now with water, if you've uh, tried playing with the colors and transparency in preview one, you would find that the changes make a lick of difference. Uh, basically mean they don't do anything at all anymore. Um, so instead, uh, the only way you can really change the water color now is through the actual water fog. Uh, so you've now got you know underwater fog density, so you can increase the amount of fog density under the water. Uh, the water fog density, like for when you're above looking down. So if you want, you can um, really lower that down, so it will make it more transparent. As you can see here, so you can see further down. This will just uh, come down to personal taste. Uh, there's also an underwater fog brightness. Uh, basically, say if you want to have a more foggier sort of experience under the water, maybe something similar to Zeus V11, you can increase the amount of uh, fog density. And then you can also increase the brightness. Goes up to about nine. Nine is uh, basically what Sonic Ether uses. Um, there's also a high quality caustics. Basically that removes the grid light pattern of the caustics, which is that you know sort of black line that you see every so many uh, sections. But that is uh, very intensive. It will you know dramatically reduce your frame rate. Also in here you got weather, which has your rain lens and uh, shifting rain. That's when the rain's falling. It's on an angle and it sort of slowly shifts. You can see it when it's you know the screen's paused. You can turn that on and off now. Uh, chucked in dynamic weather in here, and your ice and glass uh, options in here, where you can have ice refract and uh, depth fog and all that sort of stuff. Your torch colors. I haven't got rid of the underslash on all of them yet. It is a rather tedious process. But in here you can, you, know, you can change your color if you want. Torch colors. Uh, sky options. You've got your atmospheric fog, which is your distance fog. Uh, sky blue color. This here. Now you can actually change. So 0 0.5 will mean that the sky now, like the sky darkness, can be a real dark blue, more like uh, Zeus V11. Or you can increase the brightness up to something, you know, quite ridiculous, where it's really bright. Perhaps, you know, you want that for desert biomes. Alright, now Clouds. Clouds has had a, have had a huge makeover. Um, basically, basically, I've separated each section of it. So the top six are all to do with the volumetric clouds. These two here are to 
you know, change the 2D clouds. Then you've got the Zeus 2D clouds, which I would not recommend using unless you really want a second layer uh, with the Zeus volume clouds. The GTX 500 fix and the cloud shadows. I think this is a much cleaner and easier way to look at the clouds section. Alright, next up you've got the lens effects. In here you've got your motion blur and your depth of field. Distance blur is still a work in progress. Um, I haven't had much time to work with that. Uh, I probably wouldn't recommend using it. I don't think it's very good at this stage. Lens flares, I've gone in and changed the names of these. So you've got Continuum's Lens Flare. It was actually put in by another uh, shader developer called Killian. Um, I basically took that one plus a bit of Catman's lens flares to create the Continuum's new lens flare, which will always be on by default in 1.3. Uh, you can turn your bloom effects on and off in there as well. Uh, cinematic settings, you know, these are just you know, so you can slow things down if you're making an, a cinematic. Water speed, I've also added in uh, the caustic speed as well now. And MISC, which just has stuff that you really wouldn't bother touching. So yeah, basically um, I'm hoping that this will be the last preview before we do a full release of Continuum 1.3. Uh, preview 1, I didn't actually get many people writing in with bug reports, uh, so I'm assuming that it went pretty smoothly for everyone. And if this one does as well, then hopefully, hopefully, uh, I can make a full release available on the website. So yeah, there should be a download link in the description. Otherwise, uh, there will also be a link on a post on Facebook very shortly after this video goes live. So yeah, thanks for all for watching and I'll catch you all next time. Bye bye.